you're an Amazon seller that's wanting to market to your Amazon customers off Amazon and grow an email list and be able to promote product launches better and be able to overall build that relationship better with your Amazon customers, then you gotta keep watching this video because I'm about to be talking with the guys from Post Purchase Pro, Seth and Sean, and they're gonna be sharing some strategies on how to go about getting your Amazon customers' emails in a good way where they are actually opting in to give you their email address and actually sign up for your email marketing. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with me telling you who I am, then I'm gonna introduce you to Seth and Sean. So real quick, if you don't know me, my name is Ian Smith and I run an Amazon marketing agency called Evolve Media Agency. At Evolve Media, we help Amazon sellers increase their product listing pages conversion rate by revamping all of their product photos and creating videos for their listings. So what we do is we do product photo shoots, we then graphic design those images up into infographics and we will put those as the main listing images, as the A plus content images, and then doing keyword research and rewriting the title bullet points and the A plus content copy. Overall, this is gonna increase the conversion rates, making the PPC ads perform way better. You know, some of our results have been a double in conversion rate, which is gonna double the PPC ROAS, cut in half the PPC ACOS, and overall increase the organic rankings of your listing because Amazon wants listings higher in the search results that actually have better conversion rates. So that's what we help sellers do. We help them increase their conversion rates so they can overall sell more, increase the performance of their ads, and overall rank higher and get up there in the BSR and things like that. So if that sounds interesting, you and you wanna do a free audit and have me look at your listing and give you some free feedback, then book a free call with me by going to emaamz.com. Also, if you're wanting to get access to our free Amazon listing checklist, you can go to amzchecklist.com and that will give you access to a checklist that's gonna tell you what you need to be doing with your photos, what you need to be doing with your, with your videos, with your copy, how you need to be having a storefront built out, a brand story section, and what to do and what not to do with your photos and videos. So again, amzchecklist.com. All right, so now now let's go ahead and jump into the video. Let me introduce you to Seth and Sean so that they can share some really valuable information on how to go about getting your Amazon customers to actually give you their email address, sign up for your email marketing so you can start building that relationship off Amazon so that when you have product launches or you wanna cross sell them other products in your lineup, you can easily do that. Seth, Sean, thanks for jumping on this video with me, guys. Oh, Ian, I'm so glad to be here. Awesome, so yeah, tell me a little bit about what you guys do over at Post Purchase Pro. Well, let's rewind a little bit, Ian, and kind of uh, talk about where we came from and what we discovered and why we're here. So long story short, Sean and I partnered up to begin creating brands on Amazon in 2014. And we launched more than 1000 private label products, 53 brands, and we sold a lot of them. But during that process, Ian, we made a ton of mistakes, but we accidentally figured out a few things. And one of which is that following up with your customers post purchase is something that almost no sellers do, but more than 41% of all of our revenue came from there. So we created a company post purchase Pro to help Amazon sellers create that post-purchase follow-up sequences and extra revenue that we were seeing in our businesses that most sellers are ignoring. That's kind of what we do in a nutshell, Sean. Yeah, definitely. So it was really a profound discovery, Ian, when, when Seth and I did the math on that. And think about 41% doesn't really sound like a lot, but it literally equates to over 62 million in additional revenue for us over the past eight years. That's how tremendous it can be. And, yeah. you know, like we talked about before you kick the show off, Amazon tries to build this wall between us buyers and sellers where we can't communicate or build a relationship. But in reality, it's happening every day in all these bricks and mortar stores in Main Street, USA. It's not something that Seth and I just created overnight, or it's not some magic formula that we discovered. This happens all the time around us. But the only thing is, is that Amazon sellers in particular, Ian, seem to leave the customer behind and go after new customers. So Amazon sellers are creating the transaction on Amazon.com, and then they immediately go out and start looking for new customers through sponsored ads or other ranking hacks. Mm -hmm. And what we've discovered is that the customer, Ian, not the product, is the most valuable asset of any business. Yeah, yeah, I 100% agree. So share with us, what is that first strategy that you guys like hands down always implement when you're working with one of your clients to build out a post-purchase funnel? So the, the big situation in, in our industry, and, and you probably hear this all the time, is a lot of sellers believe that it's against terms of service, that you know Amazon's gonna shut me down or I'm gonna get in trouble if I reach out to my customer. So what we do is we create a scenario, if you will, where your end user at the unboxing of your product will reach out to you. The end user decides, hey, I'm gonna drop everything that I'm doing right now and engage with this brand so that I can receive more value. Maybe that's through a warranty registration or extension. Maybe 
that's through a, a, a product a demonstration video to show how to use your products safely without voiding the warranty. As long as we, we found that as long as we're providing value and world-class customer support and we create a scenario where the customer decides to reach out to us instead of us being on the offense, then we find it uh, easier to build a customer list and more beneficial to create that long-term relationship, which should be, Ian, mutually beneficial. And when you're saying you create them to reach out to you, that's through an insert or are there other ways that you know of besides inserts? There are a few ways and uh, and I'll let Seth dive into some of the others, but through a product insert, we don't call it a product insert. We call it an attention getting marketing device because we create a scenario where any reasonable Amazon shopper will drop what they're doing immediately and take action on the offer that we we put inside of the insert. So product inserts as a whole have a bad name because most, most sellers are using it wrong. They're trying to manipulate reviews or trying to you know create their rebate community or something like that. So yes, to answer your question, an attention getting marketing device, and I have an example I'll grab in a moment, an attention getting marketing device creates a scenario where your customer decides to reach out to you because we make an offer that they frankly cannot refuse. It could be a sticker on the product, could be an insert, could be a business card, could be in some cases a web key and and it just depends on the packaging and the product and the market. Yeah. So let me add a little flavor to that if you don't mind. So if you think about post-purchase marketing, well, what is that? Well, it's everything that happens after they purchase from you one time. So the regular Amazon seller, you know, spends a lot of money, spends a lot of time to capture that sale. You know, they're buying ads and then they, um, you know, grab a sale on Amazon. And then what happens? They ignore that customer. So what we do to follow up with them, the biggest marketing channel that we use is email marketing. So we follow up with our customers with email marketing. But, and you ask, what's the What's the thing that you have to have to do email marketing? Well, you have to have the email address, right? And Amazon doesn't provide that. Yeah. So we fell into this kind of trap, I guess, in 2014 when we first started. And we said, okay, we know we have to have the email address. We didn't really know how valuable they were at the time. We were just going to ask for reviews at the end. So we started trying out all these crazy inserts. We had a warranty registration card and we had um, you know, a rebate club and we had, please give us a review cards and all these things that didn't work. And then we figured out that every product serves a different customer. So every product's in insert needs to be different and think about that customer. And here's a quick story. And so we had a pillow and it was a memory foam pillow and it was really tightly vacuum sealed. And we tried a warranty card, but who wants a warranty for a $20 pillow? Didn't work. We tried, yeah. hey, give me a review. Didn't work. But then we said, okay, we're having some complaints about our product because they don't know how to use it. Well, what if we shot it um, an instructional video and we presented that video to them, number one, so they know how to use it so they have a better product experience. But number two, we figured out that everybody needs this product video, so they're going to come and engage with us. So we developed a sticker that went on the outside of this pillow. And imagine, Ian, you have this pillow in your lap and it looks like it's going to blow up um, in your face because it's so tightly vacuum sealed. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the simple sticker said, stop, do not open this product without seeing this important instructional video. Mm -hmm. And our opt-in percentage went from 1% to 88%. We had 88% of our customers opting in. We delivered that value. So right away, we delivered value. They knew how to use it. They had a great night's sleep. And then we followed up with them and sold them more pillows and more pillows. And here's where it got crazy. And the same customers bought that same exact bed pillow 27 different times. Another customer bought it 25 different times, 24 different times. We had more than thousands or more than a thousand customers buy more than 20 pillows from us. That's hmm. insane. That is insane. Yeah. So when they would see that little um, sticker on the pillow and then go to the you know landing page, would they yeah. have to opt in to see the video or would they just see the video right there on the page? <laughs> Well, so we had a few different versions of that. Um, you know, a lot of times we would have it to where they could opt in and receive a bunch of other benefits like increased warranty, first in line access to future launches, um, you know, other things. Or it would say, hey, if you don't, if you want to skip and forfeit all of your benefits, then go ahead and see the video. So there's different ways to do it. But the big thing is, what's the amazing offer? We call it a mafia offer. What's an offer that's so good that my customer could not refuse it when they see that product and put that in your insert because everybody wants to just, you know, put a QR code somewhere on their packaging and they think that's good. But why yeah. would somebody scan it? That's the big question. That's the hard part. It's thinking about what would motivate your customer to take action. Yeah, we used to do a lot of business with a lot of supplement companies like back in, you know, 2020, 2021, a lot of people were selling supplements. So we were working with a lot of different, you know, capsule type of supplements. And one insert, you know, post purchase funnel that we were seeing everybody doing was get a second bottle free. So they would, you know, buy their first bottle, they'd see a sticker, hey, get a second bottle free if you go to this website, this landing page, and they would opt in. So I always thought that was a, a really well performing post purchase funnel. Do you guys ever mess around with like free product giveaways like that? Right? Well, we use all types of what we call mafia offers. And basically a mafia offer is an offer that's so good that the buyer cannot say no. So yeah. depending
depending on the actual product. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we've used uh, free samples. We've used smaller uh, sample size products. We've used instructional videos. We've actually partnered with apps where you get a free app download. We use CPA offers through affiliate networks, depending on the product. Like we literally have an offer where if you buy a pizza cutter for $6.99 on Amazon, you get a coupon code to get a free Domino's pizza, a medium pizza oh, nice. worth 17 bucks. So not only are we getting you to opt in to download the coupon code at the point of unboxing your pizza cutter, Domino's gets a new customer out of the deal. Our customer gets a free pizza. We gain an email address. And on the back end of this, Ian, we're actually getting paid $3 commission from the affiliate network for giving away a free pizza. Those are the oh, types wow. of mafia offers that we create. And no matter how good your opt-in is, wh whether you you give away a free supplement uh, sample, if you're getting 80 or 90% opt-ins, where most sellers are getting this wrong, Ian, is they're not doing anything with the customer list after they engage with the customer. Yeah. It's an absolute sin to grow a contact list and not communicate with the customer. If I'm a customer of your brand and I choose to re-engage with you because of some offer you make me, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you have going on when you launch new products. And the, the, the hardest part for sellers to get over, the hardest hurdle for them to understand is that you have to tell your customers what's going on. You have to communicate with them and, and build up and create a cadence and stick with that cadence through your marketing. Yeah, I've seen it so many times that sellers build an email list, right? Everybody's told to build an email list. So they build an email list and then they just shelf it and they, they don't use it. And eventually that email list like expires, it goes stale, it doesn't work, it, it's not warm, it's cold, it, and it's just when you do actually use it and you hit them, it might as well be a cold email because they don't remember you, they don't care anymore. Like, so you gotta constantly be hitting that list. And I think a lot of sellers don't do that once they get an email list. What would you guys say is like the frequency that you really should be hitting your email list as you're building it? Well, we do a lot of testing to come up with these scenarios and, and we study these metrics pretty closely, but depending on the product, you know, if you're selling a claw hammer, for example, it's a pretty dumb product. It doesn't require a lot of instruction or a warranty or something like that. So supplements for me would be a scenario where we would reach out at least twice per week. Do we see unsubscribes? Of course we do. But do we create more sales? Hell yes, $62 million worth to be exact over the last eight years. So it is worthwhile to build that relationship with your customer, no matter how you're collecting emails. An email list that's not used, Ian, is like a check that you never cash. It's worthless. Yeah. So, Ian, if you think about an email list, it's just a bunch of people that you have the ability to contact. Well, I mean, what if you and I met and then I didn't text you or call you or email you for two years and then I just started to jump back into the conversation? And you're like, well, who are you again? Yeah. <clears throat> it's the same thing. These are real people and you have to maintain that relationship. So, Sean's example about the supplement people. Well, what if you could remind the customers why they bought the supplement and why they should be taking it so they actually took the thing and then got the result and then reordered because they used it and got the result. So it's just real life human interactions that are yeah. relationships. And, and it's it's um, kind of sad that Amazon puts such a wall between us that because on Main Street, the normal world businesses, I deal with you, Ian, you like my, you know, buy my business. So we do business ongoing. But on Amazon, it's like, I have to spend all this money to attract your attention one time. And then you just disappear because I don't know how to contact you or provide more value. And it's kind of crazy. Yeah, what, what we like to do when we do our email marketing is a lot of content. So we'll literally put like a blog in an email that says like three tips to clear up your skin or four ways to boost your immune system. And we'll use that content, you know, that's written content in the email. Sometimes we'll link over to an actual blog page, but we really do like to deliver that content in the email to actually build the relationship. We don't want to put it behind like a click, uh, you know, obstacle, but um, we'll do content like that. We'll do video pieces. We'll do infographic images. So we really like to to keep that relationship warm with content and then obviously hit them with offers when it makes sense, you know, Mother's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving yeah. time, Easter, things like that. As long as we're reaching out and we're providing educational or entertaining content, something funny that's maybe timely around current events or a holiday, then we find our open rates are phenomenal. We're not always pushing offers into emails because if you do, then it gets a little bit annoying. Mm -hmm. But like you said, when the timing's right, when it's appropriate, we will make an offer and we see tremendous results from that. And you know, a lot of the folks in our space, they look at this and they say, well, I don't want to annoy my customers. Yeah. But I just literally, the last phone call Seth and I just had was with a gentleman. He has an email list of 3.8 million customers over the last 18 months. He's never sent one single text or one email to that list and he thinks it's worth all this money. Well, we're tasked with the, with the, with the job of warming that list up and finding out who those hyperactive buyers are. And I can tell you that recency, the last time they heard from you, is one of the main factors in, in deciding how valuable 
valuable a customer contact is. Recency and then frequency. How, how often do you email them? And then how big of a purchase or, or how much have they spent with you in aggregate? Those so three things. That's a question that I get a lot is what is the frequency? How often should you hit them? What's yeah. too much? What's not enough? My personal opinion on that is at least once a week should be good. So that's four times a month. If you don't want to do that and you feel like that may be annoying them, bring it back to two times a month. At minimum, I feel like you should be hitting your, your list at least twice a month. What do you guys think about that? So, so I have um, a couple thoughts for you there. And I agree with you that at least once a week is probably good. But Sean and I went to this conference earlier this year and we talked to somebody just like you and we said, hey, Ian, we have this big audience. We'd like to get your message in front of our audience. <clears throat> and everybody that we talked to was super excited. It's free traffic, which basically equals free dollars, right? If I said, hey, Ian, come on my show, get free traffic, you're going to be excited and you're going to want to do it because it's free business for you. But I had to send these people four or emails in most cases to get them to even respond about getting free money. It's crazy that people think that people are going to respond in the very first email. They're just not. They're going to miss it. It's it's a non-invasive type of marketing. So yes, I sent you an email today, but you may have missed it because it got uh, pushed to the bottom of your inbox because you had other things going on. So you didn't even see that one. And then I sent you one next week. And when you opened it up, you were busy and you got distracted. So you put it away and you didn't see that one either. And then on the third week, you finally got to read my marketing message. So that took three emails before before you even read one message. So people think that sending too many emails is going to be their biggest problem when in fact, not sending enough is, is typically the problem that we see. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I would say sometimes if you're hitting them with an email with an offer that just seems too good to be true, then they're going to blow right past it because they're going to be like, there's no way that that's legitimate. Yeah. Nobody's going to give me something for free without something in return, right? They're always like, what's the catch, right? So I, I would guess that. But yeah, also, you know, <laughs> with email marketing, there's other things that come into play like junk mail. Your, your email could go to junk folders. Yeah. You know, people just like what you said, it gets buried by other emails. They may be out on vacation or, you know, things like that change. So yeah, email marketing is, is definitely crazy. But you guys, would you say that that's like majority of your focus? The the main service you guys provide is, is email marketing or do you guys do anything else? That's 100% of what we do, Ian. And the crazy okay. part is that for Post Purchase Pro, our company, 68% of our revenue comes from email marketing ourselves. So we live, eat, sleep, and breathe it because we can see it working in our business. And then as a service, that's all we do. So we're really focused on this. And the, the best part about email for an Amazon seller is that Amazon rewards external traffic with more keyword rank. So if I create an email campaign and sell more of your product on Amazon with that email traffic that's coming from an external source, then right away you create sales because the email marketing traffic uh, landed on your page and then bought more of your product, right? But Amazon sees that traffic as a signal that your product is in high demand. It's attracting customers to their platform, which is what they're after. And then they move you up in the search term results. So then you get more organic traffic for free ongoing. So yes, you make more sales with email marketing, but you make more ongoing sales because Amazon rewards you with better keyword ranking. That's yeah. that's where it becomes so big of an opportunity. You know, Ian, yeah. there's so many things to unpack when it comes to uh, how we do what we do. So uh, Seth and I, uh, we wrote four books about marketing for Amazon sellers and I actually prepared something just for you and your audience. So I posted it into the chat there. We, we just released a book a couple days ago called How I Sold an Additional $62,730,000 on Amazon with Three Simple Secrets. And I'm making that available the Kindle version for free. If you just uh, use that link that I shared with, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to say it out loud, so I'll leave it up to you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it goes ahead. So, yeah, so, so pppro.co slash 67m. That's a lowercase m for 67. Um, I don't know why it's 67. It should be 62m. But pppro.co slash 67m will take you to the Amazon store uh, where you can grab that Kindle version free for the next six days. And it's just a, it's a story. It's a short story with three simple secrets that Seth and I use to sell an additional 62730000 on Amazon using the exact processes that we're talking about right here, Ian. Awesome. Yeah. And we'll put it like a graphic overlay in this video. Okay. So they'll, they'll be able to see it. And then we'll also put it in the uh, video description as well. But yeah, I guess before we wrap up, guys, any last things that you got, want to share with the uh, viewers? So I would say that if you're looking at your business and you're viewing Amazon as your business, and you're not in and you're creating transaction, then you have a massive opportunity because you have customers that are interacting with your brand every single day that know, like, and trust you in that moment. But if you're not capturing some way to contact them, a phone number, an email address, something like that, um, and you're not providing
providing more value ongoing, they are not buying as much as they would from you. So you have a massive opportunity. For us, it was 41% of our revenue would have been missing and you're missing even more because of keyword ranking. So I would say the very first thing that I would do if I were you as an Amazon seller is I would look at my product and say, okay, what could I put inside of my product? That's, you know, a product insert as, you know, as they say, that would be so amazing that if I were my customer, I would jump all over it as soon as I could to then opt in and start building that email list and then actually email them something that's cool, valuable and make an offer to them. And you'll see the power of this. It's absolutely game changing. Ian. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm a firm believer of it. Like we, uh, we've been doing a lot of post-purchase marketing strategies for, for customers for years now. And so, you know, I, I want to be able to, um, tell people about it and help people, but you know, sometimes it's, it's difficult to get that customer data or to get, to find out that offer, you know, sometimes you got to be really creative to figure out what can I offer, can I offer in the <laughs> insert to be able to get people to take action and immediately move. So that's definitely the challenge. So if you guys are sharing some of those ideas with, um, with your clients and people that, you know, you have in your ecosystem, then that's, that's super powerful. So thanks you, you guys big time for jumping on this video with me. And, um, I'll definitely include that link below. If you guys want to learn more about the, uh, is it a Kindle Kindle book, the free Kindle book? Yes, sir. The it's the Kindle version. It's free for another six days. Uh, right now it's number one bestseller for, uh, email or internet marketing and email marketing, email sales. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for your time today and we'll catch you in the next one. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Ian.